Hello fellow YouTubers, in this video I'm going to be comparing these two processors, the Intel i5-3570K and Intel Xeon processor which is E3-1230V2. Now they're both Ivy Bridge and they're both LGA-1155. Um, this particular CPU is actually built for other chips that then, uh, for instance, Z68, Z77 or Z87. Well, this uh, works probably best on the ones like Z77. However, they, they were both used in this scenario in Z77 platform and the benchmark results were made basically using both CPUs at stock speed and obviously also compared to i5-3570K overclock to as much as 4.5 gigahertz. Now this video will be split in three parts. First, I'm gonna show you the results straight away. Um, I'm gonna go to the basically the final results, show you the charts, show you the heat uh, consumption, uh, uh, sorry, heat dissipation from both CPUs and I'm gonna show you the wattage use and things like that. So basically I'm gonna go straight to mini conclusion. If you want to see screen charts and uh, basically description of the system next, you can go to the part two when I'm gonna talk about the CPU and uh, GPU used, because obviously some of the tests will involve my GPU as well, which is GTX 760 from uh, Gigabyte. And I'm going to talk about the configuration of the PC and uh, what benchmarks I ran. And in the third part, I'm going to basically show you raw data and I'm going to talk uh, through each test that I did. So there's, there's uh, something like 17 tests and I'm going to show you quickly uh, the benefits or drawbacks of each CPU. So um, let's get started. Right. And first, uh, I'm going to jump straight into the results, not going to bore you with um, basically all the benchmarks and ev everything. I'm just going to show you average overall. Now, as you can see on my left screen here, um, these are the averages here for synthetic benchmarks, synthetic benchmarks again, and some games and synthetic benchmarks in terms of 2D and 3D here as well in the bottom. So as you see overall, um, the Xeon CPU performs very well in CPU bound applications. As you can see on top, it actually performs faster than 3570K overclocked at 4.5 gigahertz, which is the whole gigahertz more than tw what is 1230 V2 is, is, is capable of. So that's a good advantage. Um, obviously, you can see that uh, 3570K at 4.5 gigahertz nearly catches up with that CPU, but we're going to talk about drawbacks of overclocking to such high frequencies as well. Secondly, as you see, 3D Mark and 3D Mark 11, in terms of the stock versus stock CPUs, once again, the Xeon one performs much, much better. However, um, the overclock 3570K is actually faster in this scenario. And same on the bottom, the 3570K overclocked is much faster, even the stock is faster, and 1230V2 actually underperforms a little bit, up to say 4, 3-4%. And I'm going to go through all the details a bit later in the video for those who are interested. But basically, what that means is if you are running CPU for CPU bound applications like rendering, encoding, and any processing that it requires CPU alone, then you are better off with 1230v2. However, if you currently have 3570k and you're willing to overclock it, you're probably better off staying with that CPU. There's no need to upgrade and get those uh, eight threads because um, the E3 1230v2 is actually hyper-threaded CPU in, instead of where i5-3570K simply has four cores and is not hyper-threaded. If you want to see more, you can click on my video here and you'll be forwarded to one of my unboxings of this particular CPU and I'm going to talk a bit more about the differences between those two and i7 as well. Next, I'm going to show you the power and that's where everything makes sense. If you look at the bottom two on my left screen, when the CPU is idle, the 1230V2 consumes up to 25% less power, which is huge, guys. If you want to run your system cool, obviously you want your system to consume less watts and especially the CPU. 
that's why it runs cooler because it does consume much less energy if you look at the load um, wattage as well you can see that this gap increases even further 3570k is quite um, a hungry cpu in terms of the power compared at least to the 1230v2 and uh, obviously once you overclock the power just shoots through the roof and in terms of the temperatures obviously the same situation 1230v2 is very low in terms of temperatures and actually fans don't even need to spin as you can see on the top left here at 80 percent speeds it's it's perfectly fine if you can spin them at say 50 percent and it would still remain with this uh, temperature so as you see although it's a bit slower in some games and it's much faster in cpu bound applications it is a very good performer because the power usage is much much lower than 3570k even at the stock speeds now next i'm going to talk about what actual individual benchmarks i have done and i'm going to tell you basically what hardware have i used so if you look on my right screen these are the benchmarks i've done in terms of the games obviously there was borderlands which I used a controlled scene and I did the same run over and over. All the benchmarks were run at least two times. So once again, Borderlands, Half-Life, Lost Coast, Metro 2033 and Tomb Raider. Now the last three games actually do have in-game benchmarks so it was very easy to run these. 3D Mark 11 and 3D Mark were also part of the package. Um, Next, going in, at least into 3D applications, we have Yunshai in Heaven and Valley benchmarks. And we also have MSI Combustor, which has some uh, 3D benchmarks, which I just uh, found useful. And in terms of the CPU bound um, application benchmarks, we have IDA 64 Extreme Edition, Cinebench 64 bit, Maxwell Render with the custom benchmark scene, Performance Test, Adobe uh, Premiere performance basically test file prime 95 and si software sandra Lite 2013 sp4 now in terms of the hardware that i used um this is basically a 3570k at stock speed and idle and this is 3570k at stock speed and at full load here we have 3570k overclocked at 4.5 gigahertz at idle and here we have at full load and same for the Intel Xeon 1230v2, here it is at idle and here it is at full load. And we have obviously GPU Z to show my video used, the video card used, which is a Gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 Windforce 3 Edition Revision 2. You can obviously see the unboxing if you click on my right screen and uh, you'll be simply forwarded to my video where I did an unboxing followed by benchmark and more. And here are the NVIDIA drivers used, which was 320.49. Now, in terms of other um, hardware, I use Maximus 5G motherboard, Z77 chipset. Um, I obviously use both CPUs. Uh, what else there? I use Intel 330 120 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of G-Skill 1600 megahertz RAM, um, basically four modules by four. So yeah, this is uh, basically the test that I did and this is the hardware configurations. Now I'm gonna go briefly through all the tests. Now for those people who are interested in raw data, this is it here if you look on my left screen. Now notice uh, there are some parts marked in yellow. In this case, the lower the score is actually better. So that's the raw um, details basically if you want to pause there and have a look. Now next I'm going to go quickly for all the benchmarks just underlining some weird situations. The term of 3D Mark, uh, in terms of 3D Mark 11, there was nothing strange. A uh, physics test did pretty well on both 3570K overclocked and 1230V2. 1230V2 was here in, in the lead a little bit. 3D Mark 13 version 1.1 was a bit strange. Because if you look at the ice storm on the bottom graphics score and physics score, 
the 1230 actually lags behind i don't know why is that to be honest with you because i ran the test at least four if not five times and always the scores were like this however if you look at the next two benchmarks which is cloudgate and firestrike the 1230 v2 performs pretty well compared even to overclock 3570k next was uh, ida extreme 64 uh, version 3.0 now, once again, there were some inconsistencies here, like for instance, the top result was in favor of 1230 V2. However, the next three results are not great. And especially compared to overclock 3570K, they lie behind quite a bit. The other tests were quite okay, especially CPU Queen performing quite well as well on the both overclock 3570K and 1230 V2, which is in the lead. Cinebench was somewhat a mixed bag where 3570k stock is obviously slowest and 1230v2 is in the second place which I was expecting uh, for it to be actually in the lead even over the overclock 3570k however it was not the case. I can only guess that the application is not uh, well coded for multi-threaded CPUs because if you go to Maxwell render and if we look at the bottom where it says score um, we can actually see that 1230v2 performs faster than 3570k overclocked and 4.5 gigahertz next is performance test v uh, version 8.0 and here we have results uh, that are pretty okay however in 2d graphics mark 1230 v2 lags behind um, i don't know why is that exactly maybe it's a single single core optimized Maybe that's why other tests were quite okay. CPU mark actually showed a good increase of 1230v2 versus stock 3570k and it actually went faster than 3570k overclocked. This particular benchmark PPBM6 uh, May Edition is for Adobe Premiere users and the main result to look at would be here H.264 encoding time and as you can see the lower the better and 1230v2 was nearly as good as 3570k at 4.5 gigahertz. Now this particular one is very strange because basically it means that if you have 3570k and if you do overclock it at 4.5 gigahertz, you're much better off. Next one is Prime95, which is once again a mixed bag. Um, it was very hard to compare because for 3570k stock version and overclocked version, I simply used um, timing FFTs using one, two, three, and four threads, uh, 8192K, best time in milliseconds. I was very easy, however, once I started benchmarking, benchmarking 1230V2, I got using one core, one thread, two cores, four threads, three cores, six threads, and four cores, eight threads. And I just put the numbers in there. But as you see, it performs quite slow and I don't really know what's the situation there and if it's a fair example. So take that with a little grain of salt. Uh, Sys software, Sandra Light, um, same as before. We can see that CPU bound um, benchmarks are performing very well on uh, 1230 V2. Net multimedia, arithmetic, same for processor multimedia and arithmetic. However, it's strange to see here file system input output um, operations per second, I guess. Um, the 3570K stock actually performs faster than 1230V2. And when you overclock it, the difference is nearly 10%. Unigine in heaven didn't really show any performance increases of any CPUs. If you look at the average FPS and score, they're nearly identical. However, in Unigine Valley, you can actually see that 1230v2 starts lagging behind, especially minimum FPS. MSI Combustor shows the same trend. And once again, same is visible in Borderlands 2, especially on the minimum FPS and averages doesn't do any favors for 1230v2. However, it's not a huge difference it might be 10% difference between overclock 3570K, but in terms of FPS, you won't be losing that much. And Half-Life Lost Coasts, uh, this is perfectly controlled by Half-Life Benchmark, so you wouldn't see much difference. 
Metro, however, you can see that average uh, FPS in 1230 V2 once again suffer by a couple percent, and especially minimum FPS, you can see that is way behind. Next was Tomb Raider, and the result here is even more obvious that 1230 V2 lags behind by 10 up to 10 percent compared to 3570K, especially overclocked. And once again, we're back to averages. So yeah, guys, um, this is my video. This is the findings. Um, I spent a good uh, bit of time there looking through these charts. And the, tre the trend is really obvious. If you need the CPU that basically helps you perform in your day-to-day -day tasks and software that is CPU bound, you're better off with 1230V2. However, if you do game a bit and you're not that focused on productivity, um, as in, I don't know, video editing, uh, rendering, uh, working with Photoshop and such, you might as well go with 3570K. Even if you do, you could overclock 3570K to 4.5 gigahertz and you will be fine. Also, 3570K is actually working very well with Z77 chipsets and such where the Xeon obviously is a server CPU and it's not that optimized for this system. You would need a different type of board with different chipset and, and resale value of 3570K in, in the gaming machine is much better than 1230V2. So yeah, these are my findings. I hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, click the like button and subscribe. And feel free to ask any questions in the comment section down below. And Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.